and a very warm welcome from uh, Trivandrum. Thank you for joining us. Um, you know, uh, this was the topic which we chose. How then uh, shall we live? Uh, um, the reason, uh, the reason why we came to this is uh, this particular verse, Colossians chapter three and verse one to two. Uh, you know, when the lockdown started, uh, we were uh, meditating on God's word, and uh, this this verse was uh, speaking very powerfully to me. Uh, that we have to set our hearts on things above and uh, set our minds on things above. Very a um, lot of emphasis given uh, to look at things which are above. And uh, as we were meditating on this, and I did some uh, read uh, reading up, and I was sharing. Uh, uh, you know, listening to some sermons and all this. Actually, uh, one of our uh, church members, he has got uh, two teenage uh, children, and he said he called me and he said, um, uh, you know, now we are all living in a very difficult time. The corona is uh, going uh, rapidly increasing. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people are dying. Uh, you know, but our young people, young children, they don't know, uh, they're not concerned about death. You know, they think that all, uh, all these things will go uh, just, like, uh, just like it's going. So he said, I think we should, uh, uh, you know, take some time to teach them what eternity is all about and what will, uh, what will happen after death. When a believer dies, what happens and where, where do they go? So, uh, you know, that was a confirmation uh, in our hearts. And uh, we started to do a study uh, in the church. Uh, it's more than 10 weeks. Uh, the study has been going on uh, in the church. Uh, we, in the church, we might finish uh, next week, God willing. So uh, this gave, uh, gave a great burden. It was a great blessing for me personally. As a family, uh, you know, Jesse and myself, we, it, was, it was a great blessing for us. Uh, although we have heard these messages, although we have read these verses several times, this was the first time that uh, we could study in a very systematic manner. Uh, I just want to uh, tell you, th th this, is, this study is no way exhaustive. Don't, you know, don't think that it's like a Bible college uh, study or anything. It's not like that. It's, it's just enough for us to build um, our, our faith. So um, that, is, that is how we started. So I would like to uh, start this uh, study like this, you know, uh, that we have to set our, thing, our, my, our hearts and our minds on things which are above. So, uh, um, sorry, There's some more people. Uh, uh, so, uh, let me start off uh, by saying this: God wants all of us to be in heaven. Yeah. All of us. He, that's his desire. How, how do, how do you uh, think uh, I'm saying that? And I just want to show you two scriptures. In 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 3 to 4, it says, This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved. It doesn't, it doesn't say that you know, just Israelites, just uh, Palestinians, just living around Israel, just people from India or UK or uh, US or Mongolia. No. Is God wants everyone to be saved. Okay, that's uh, that's the premise that we're going to work up. And Second Peter chapter three and verse nine, it says, "The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He's patient with us, not wanting anyone to perish. You know, anyone. He doesn't want anybody to perish. He wants everyone. That's His heart's desire. And." He made the provision for us, you know, so that everyone can uh, enter heaven. What was the provision? We all know that in John chapter 10, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He's, he sent his own dear son. He had only one son and he sent his to the earth to live just, just like me and you. And he uh, suffered the cross. He bled and died. He was nailed. He, he was whipped. He was uh, nailed to the cross and he was pierced and he died and he shed his last drop of blood and he died on the cross. That's how he made the provision for all of us to go to heaven. He suffered uh, for all of us. You know, First Peter chapter 3 and 18 
says, for Christ also suffered for sins once for all. You know, somebody, I read it somewhere uh, the other day. It says, he, doesn't, he didn't write once for some. He said, once for all, once for everyone, once for all nations, all tribes, all tongues. So that's why he died. I just want to come back to that verse. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is sitting, seated at the right hand of God. And then it says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So this is not a request. This is not, a, a, you know, some kind of pleading to us. It, it's, the, you know, the Lord is not giving us an option, but rather it's a command. It said, you since uh, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things about. You know, it's a very strong word. Look at it uh, later uh, in, in uh, later in the presentation. Set your hearts on things about where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And it re-emphasizes. It says, no, "Set your minds on things about, and not on earthly things. Not on earthly things." So. What did Jesus say? You know, I just want to highlight some of the uh, words where Jesus spoke in this regard. You know, when Jesus was praying for his disciples in the high priestly prayer in uh, John chapter 17, he prayed this, you know, this powerful statements. I just want to give you three verses in John. It's, you know, he's saying he's praying regarding his disciples and in a larger sense regarding us also. He says they do not belong to the world. As I do not belong to the world. Jesus is saying, all the people who believe in me, who, whoever has made me Lord, their, their Lord, they are not, they do not belong to the world, just like I do not belong to. Jesus is saying, I don't belong to the world. I came to the world. I lived in the world, but I do not belong, belong to the world. He's saying, just like that, you also, even though you're living in the world, you don't belong to the world. And the previous verse, it's saying, He's praying to God. He's praying to God the Father. He's saying, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to take them from the evil one. Uh, I, think, I think one phone uh, is unmuted. If you, I would uh, appreciate if you can kindly mute your phone because there's an uh, uh, echo coming. In. Thank you. So John chapter 17, verse 15, it says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. So, um, you know, some, some of us have, a, have got an idea, you know, we, uh, if we have to live a holy life, we have to escape from this world, go live in some uh, secluded uh, place and maybe in the Himalayas. No, God says we have to be in the world. We are not of the world. We don't belong to the world, but we have to live in the world. And the Lord is asking his father's protection for each and every one of our lives. So John 17, 14, the previous verse again, he says, the world has hated them, hated us, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. So brothers, sisters, you know, we are living in this world, but since we are the followers of Jesus, since we are following Jesus, we do not belong to this world, so we will be hated whilst we live in this world. So this, you know, the Bible gives a lot of warnings against worldliness. You know, if you remember, keep that verse in mind, uh, Colossians 3, uh, 2. Uh, it says, set your minds on things above, and not on earthly things, you know, the worldliness. So we're going to look at uh, the, uh, there is a lot of warnings against setting our minds on earthly things. So we'll just quickly look at some of the warnings which the Bible tells us. So what is worldliness? You know, I found this uh, definition very powerful. It says worldliness is what any particular culture does to make sin look normal and righteousness look strange. Isn't that amazing? You know, when, uh, the, when the Bible says that, you know, marriage is sacred and uh, sex out of marriage sin and uh, you know now we we see what is happening across uh, in the countries e even uh, even churches ha are having bishops who are gay so worldliness is what any particular culture does to make sin look normal 
and righteousness look strange. If we say that the Bible says like this, we'll be strangers. You know, I was really touched by uh, this uh, statement by Leonard Ravenhill. You know, he was a very powerful man of God who lived uh, some years back. Are the things you are living for worth Christ dying for? He's telling us the lifestyle that you're living now, things that you are desiring for in your life right now, the things, the, the, the things that is the, you know, which is priority in your life, the things that you're living for, just think, was it worth Christ dying for you? For that life, for those things? You know, as we listen to the word, let's examine our hearts. Are the things that we are living for worth Christ's death, you know, that cruel death. You know, we should never ever take our eyes off the cross of Jesus Christ. The, way, the suffering that he went through, the pain that he went through, the shame that he endured, you know, the severe, severe beating that he endured on that, on that day. We should always look at our life. Lord, the things that I'm living for, was it worth that you should die for me? We go to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 18 to 20. So I'll start with verse 20 first. The Bible says our citizenship is in heaven. You know, as soon as we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, you know, some people want to accept Jesus only as their Savior because it's very easy. Lord, save me from my sin. Uh, but then we don't give the right to Jesus to interfere in our lives. We don't want him to be Lord of our lives, but that's not what the Bible teaches us. The Bible wants, the, the, the Lord wants, uh, Jesus wants to be our Lord. You know, there's a powerful statement which says, either he's the Lord of all or none at all. So when we become his children, we become his disciples, he becomes our Lord and our citizenship is changed from the world, it's canceled and we become citizens of heaven. So verse 20, uh, it says citizenship is in heaven. What struck me more was uh, there were two other verses about that. In verse 18, it says, for as I have often to told you before and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. You know, the Holy Spirit is telling, we have become citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. We have transferred our citizenship. But now when you look around, he says many are living as the enemies of the cross of Christ. You know, we would, we would think that, um, uh, you know, the enemies of the cross of Christ might be the ISIS or the Taliban or, you know, the extreme fundamentalist groups. We might be thinking, you know, they are the enemies of cr the cross of Christ. But look carefully at verse 19. It says... Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. Can you imagine that? Holy Spirit is telling, if our mind is full of earthly things, we are the enemies of the cross of Christ. We, must be, we might be going to church. We might be very active in church. We might be uh, knowing all the verses by heart. We might be knowing all the songs by heart. You know, we might be doing a lot of good deeds, you know, helping a lot of other people. All that is fine. But the Lord is telling, if our mind is set on earthly things, we are living as the enemies of the cross of Christ. So you see the difference? The Bible is telling us very powerfully, very strongly, he says, set your mind on things above, set your heart. Because if you are setting your heart on earthly things, then we are becoming the enemies of the cross of Christ. Did we get it? So, uh, you, you know, it's not, um, uh, you know, it's not, don't think, uh, don't, please don't take it lightly because this, this passage really struck me very hard. What is our priority today? Where is our heart today? Where is our mind today? You know, if, if we, if we are asked three questions as to what our priorities in the order of priority, what is the first, second and third thing which is coming immediately to our mind? There, the glory of God there is the will of God there is is you know where are our passions what is our desire you know some years back uh, we 
to uh, you know uh, north india to to a youth camp in a in a college and you know uh, uh, the main speaker he asked uh, the the group he asked the group what is your desire you know they are all imagine this these are all uh, uh, sons and daughters of uh, christians they have grown up grown and brought up christian families uh, raised up as christians from different places and he asked what is your desire you know you are you are doing uh, your medicine here uh, medical degree and what is your desire when you when you finish your medical degree you know there were a lot of things you know i was expecting i was expecting there you know at least one person i think there might there might have been 80 people 80 to 100 people at least would have said uh, you know that i want to go as a medical missionary but you know we had answers like i want to be the ceo of disneyland in florida everything but you know living for christ did you understand so this is not this is don't take it as light our, our citizenship citizenship is in heaven but if our mind is set on earthly things we are living as the enemies of cross of the cross of christ so we have to take a decision as to where our priorities lies the uh, you know the bible continues to warn us warn us in matthew 16:26 it says what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life praise the lord we might get all uh you know the riches we might get all the best uh, house or car or uh you know the job the dress the fancy pen that you wanted the fancy laptop the fancy mobile you know everything might we might uh, we might get you know the best kind of lifestyle uh that we can uh, that we can have but at the end what does it benefit in luke 21 34 it says be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap you know dissipation means over indulgence in sensual pleasures the squandering of money energy or resources uh, the lord is warning us be on guard Jesus is going to come back. At that time, we should not be caught with dissipation, or you know that we are spending our time and energy in sensual pleasures and squandering of money for all worldly things. Romans twelve twelve, it says, "Do not be conformed to this world." Too. It's like um, uh, it's like a mold. a mold uh, where, where uh, you know in the factories they try to uh, you know uh, press plastic or other metal or something into a mold so the world is always trying trying to pressurize us and put it in its mold its own mold the lord is telling us don't be conformed to this world the world will try to mold you into its shape the mold will try to the world will try to mold you into its own uh, shape and its own fashions and its own culture but don't be conformed to this world we have to fight it we have to we might have to fight it don't be conformed to this world then again again in titus chapter 2 and verses 11 to 12 it says for the grace of god has appeared bringing salvation to all training us to renounce and worldly passions we have to say no again and again to the worldly passions james 4 and verse 4 it says adulterers do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with god you know this is a this is a test where is our friendship if our friendship is with the world we are enemies to god again the same verse from philippians 3 and for whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of god see none of us want to be there again in first john chapter 2 and verse 15 to 17 he says do not love the world or the things in the world the love of the father is not in those who love the world first In the next verse it says for all that is in the world the desire of the flesh the desire of the eyes the pride in riches come not from the father but from the world the lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and the pride of life it doesn't come from the father above but it comes from the world and it will destroy us 
And in verse 17, it says, and the world and its desire are passing away, but those who do the will of God will live. Yeah. You want eternal life. We need to say no to the world. We need to take our eyes. We need to take our desires. We need to take, our, take the thoughts out of this world. And we have to set our hearts and minds on things. Of the world. So first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19, it says, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. You know, where, where is our, why did we start following Jesus? What was the motive of deciding to follow Jesus? A job? To get good, good marks in our studies? To get a good admission or to get, get a good wife or a husband? To get a good job, to get good promotion, to get a good car, to get a good wife, uh, uh, house. Well, why? The Bible is telling us, if you hope, if we hope, if it's including me, okay, I'm not, I, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. It's including me. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are pitied, we are miserable. Again, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 to 21, it says, Don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No? Our hearts, if it has to go, if it has to set, uh, if our heart has to be set above, then our treasure also should be above. Pressure in earth and look away. It's, it's, it's going to be a big struggle. So decide where your treasure is, where to keep our treasures. Proverbs 23, when verse 7, it says, it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So our heart is very important. So <clears throat> talking about heavenly citizenship. So in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20, we read, we read that uh, the, uh, the, our citizenship uh, is in heaven. So what does that entail? You know, um, we are, although we are citizens of heaven, we are residents of the earth. So uh, our citizenship is in heaven. So what do we expect when we go to heaven? Why do we, why do we desire or why did God say that we have to set our minds and hearts on the thing we're about. We'll look at six reasons quickly, one slide each. Number one reason. First reason why he set our minds and hearts on things above is because Jesus Christ lived. You know the uh, uh, you know the heaven might have the best paved roads. The, uh, you know, it must have it must have the golden roads and you know emeralds and all the pearls and sapphires and diamonds everywhere. You know, it, it must be glorious over there. But that's not why we go go to heaven. That's not why God asked us to go to heaven to sit and uh, minds on things above and hearts on things above. The number one reason, you know, in even Colossians three one it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. That's lives our Lord who died on the cross who came down you know as Philippians chapter 2 who humbled himself and you know he became obedient and he humbled himself took the man took, took the form of a servant and he became a man and he became obedient and he obedient to death even the death on the cross God who died for me God who shed that last drop of his blood for me, when nobody could save me, when nobody could save me from my sins or forgive my sins or cleanse me from my sins, he was the one who came and saved me. He was the one who came down, leaving all his glory, leaving all his, uh, all his worship up there in heaven. He left everything and he came down to, to the earth just because he loved me. I'm going to meet him there. That's why. God said, set your minds on things above. Set your heart on things above. Secondly, why did God say to set our hearts and minds on things above? It's a source of real joy. You know, 
when uh, the disciples came back to Jesus and said, we saw demons being cast out in your name. He says, don't rejoice that spirit submit to you. That's not the source of joy. The, the, main, the only source of joy is that your names are in heaven. That's where we are going to have the, the real fun, the real joy that we're going to get. The rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That's why we are going there. Not only that, the Bible says, so you know, he says that to his disciples in Luke 22 and verse 30. He said, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. He's saying that to his 12 disciples. You're going to judge the tribes of the disciples. But, but as in the Bible, it also says that you will be judging angels, that you and me will be judging angels. We'll be higher responsibility. If we are faithful in little, in the little things that God has given us on the earth, there, when we go to heaven, we are going to get a promotion. I think somebody's mobile is on. Uh, uh, the mute. Uh, could you please mute all the phones? Thank you. So there's going to be an exaltation, a promotion when we go to heaven. Jesus Christ promises us a permanent residence in heaven. You know, in John chapter 14, verse 2 to 3, it says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were, it were, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And then he says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. You know, I was... Uh, many of you might be uh, living in your own house. I mean, God has given us also our own house. But today, I was, as I was uh, preparing, uh, I was thinking, you know, uh, from my childhood, I've lived in at least 15 or 16 houses, different houses. So houses I've moved from one place to the other. But one day, we'll get the permanent residence in heaven. We don't change our other card anymore. We don't have to apply for the change of address anymore. We don't have to you know, go behind governmental agencies to change our address, permanent residences here or there. God said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That's why God, this God says, I'm preparing a mansion and a place and an own place for you. It cannot be compared to any of the houses that you have lived in so far. That's why Jesus says, set our minds on the things above, things of the earth. Why did God say again? Why did God say that we should set our hearts and minds on things above? First Peter chapter 1 and verse 4, it says, And in an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Not only are there mansions, not only is Jesus Christ there. Is our names, uh, you know, our uh, names are there. Not only is uh, the great mansion kept ready for us, not only that, there's a great inheritance in heaven for us. Are we realizing that? He says, This inheritance is not like you know, your mutual funds, it's not like your equity shares. It's not like your stock markets, which will crash according to how the market behaves. No, it says into an inheritance that can never ever perish, spoil off. It will not depreciate according to the, the political circumstances. It will not de depend upon the corona. It will not depend upon the financial health of the, of the, of the country that we are living in. Ha uh, hallelujah. It, it will de it, since it's in heaven, they have the inheritance for us will never fade, perish or spoil, which is their inheritance. That's why God says, put, your, uh, put our hearts and minds in heaven. Finally, a register is kept of the names of the citizens. It says, nothing impure will never enter it. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names. You will know, not find wicked people there. You will not find uh, you know, people who practice sin in this life. You will not see people who have been, uh, you know, uh, living uh, immoral lives there. Wicked people will not get there. Only people who have people who have lived a holy life, people who have lived according to the word of God, who have accepted Jesus Christ into the Lord. Satan will not be there. Temptations will not be there. Fear will not be there. Death will not be there. But 
you know those whose lambs whose names are written in the lambs book or that they will be there enjoying their time with him so the lord says set your minds on things above where are our thoughts and our minds and our hearts today the bible is telling us the holy spirit is telling us don't put our hearts on earthly things because if we put our hearts on earthly things are we becoming enemies of god be god wants us to set our hearts and minds on the things which are above again you know colossians 3 1 since then you have been raised with christ set your hearts on things above where christ is seated at the right hand of god set your minds on things above not on earthly things just uh you know in verse 1 if you look at it if you look at the uh, the original word uh, the root meaning it says this word means to earnestly seek you know casual seeking not just oh if i if i'm able I'll, i'll be able to find it or if i get time seek it or if it's convenient for me i'll uh, i'll uh, seek it or uh, after after i retire from work i'll go and put my feet up and then i'll seek this word says to earnestly seek doesn't depict a casual seeker anymore but rather one who makes an earnest inquiry you remember the the parable uh, jesus says about the lost drama the lost coin she swept the whole house it was not a casual seeking is she swept she made every single earnest effort to find out that coin if we make an earnest inquiry for something so intense that it causes one to put his whole effort forward in search for it all told us to seek those things that are above namely the things where christ is he was urging us to put forward our best possible efforts verse 2 you know which we read set your minds on things above in you know, different translations it says fix your thoughts on things above fix it not just wandering fix your thoughts on things above lock your thoughts there or make the decision to focus focus you know we know how if we are, if you have worked on a manual camera how you get things in focus you rotate the dial you take the the focus of the camera so that the picture is crisp and clear make the decision to focus on things above or deliberately not just you know uh, a very casual way but deliberate deliberate effort think on things about you know all this if you study it depicts or it clearly shows a choice or a decision made with a person's mind that is independent of his or uh, her emotions so when we feel good we'll do it when we feel bad we don't do it no it's not depending on our emotions but rather a choice of the mind your minds on things about so you know i read this paraphrased version it says since then you are raised together with christ earnestly and intensely seek the things that are about where christ is seated at the right hand of god focus your mind on the many things that are about and don't get stuck in low level thinking about temporary things here on the earth very strong verses very strong verses and a command to us focus when well, how's our focus today where are we focusing yes i mean you know just because uh, it says said our uh, the bible says that said our mind some things which are about you know uh, we just become heavenly minded and uh, we should not become of uh, uh, no use uh, to to the earth. that's not how uh, things um, uh, which is commanded here but rather Our, our priorities, our choices, our you know in it the first priority in our heart, our focus will be on should be on things about. Imagine uh, you know if the president of India called me uh, to uh, New Delhi to receive an award, and he sent me the ticket by Rajdhani from Trivandrum to New Delhi. when it's a beautiful train to travel on it takes the coastal route and i got the tickets and i'm so so eager to go to new delhi and meet the president there so i bought the train 
you know the next day it starts around 7:45 in uh, trivandrum next day afternoon about 1 o'clock it touches madgaon which is goa it's a beautiful place you know a lot of cashews lot of local delicacies lot of uh, t-shirts and lot of things local things which are made there the train stops for about 10 to 15 minutes there imagine I, i get down there i'm so enthralled by the things which are there on uh, sale in the in the in the train station and and i buy this and i buy that and i enjoy this and i eat a little bit of this and eat a little bit of that and i buy so much so that i can eat the remaining uh, in the train imagine if the train leaves by that time all my efforts where was my thoughts where did i set my thoughts on where did my heart and my minds focus on if my focus was on getting to new delhi to see the president to receive the award from him i would have made sure that i got back in the train as soon as possible it's just like that the skept a great inheritance for us god has kept crowns for us god has kept mansions and he himself is waiting you know when stephen is being martyred in acts uh, we see that jesus christ himself standing up to receive stephen back into heaven you know jesus christ himself is waiting to receive each and every one of us into heaven what if we miss the boat what if we set our minds on things which are earthly and we become enemies of god we are the losers it's a long race hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 says therefore since surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles you know there is a lot of things lot of distractions the devil will put all kinds of vanity fairs around us to distract our attention chapter 12 and verse 1 says since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us we have to win that prize we have to reach there so this is the study that we are going to look at over the next few weeks every saturday god willing we would like to come together like this spend some time in worship and see what this journey is all about see what this choice is what are the choices that we need to make you know we have to face either of the two realities in our life either death or the second coming of jesus we have to face all of us has to face this reality you know we cannot escape it you know i i was reading about uh, somebody's quote uh, today i'm not afraid of death but i don't want uh, to be there when it comes that's uh, the attitude of many people they're all afraid of death we don't know how to face death confidently we don't know what is lying because yeah it's understandable yeah we don't know what is after that but the bible says death is the golden key that opens the door to eternity but which part of eternity will we go either to heaven or to hell when we open when death opens or when jesus christ comes and that eternal door the door to eternity is opened which door will open in front of us to heaven to hell we need to make sure when we live here so it's very important we know how to live so that we get to eternal life not to eternal death so that's the study uh, which is all about is looking at uh, what is death uh, what are the types of death what happens to a believer when he or she dies what are the two pathways what happens there what is the judgment all about what is the separation and gathering and finally we'll come back, we'll come to heaven how what are the uh, you know a lot of other things uh, which happens in heaven and finally we'll come coming back to colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2